Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be discussing how to find the effective resistance in a circuit. So I'm going to do a series circuit, parallel circuit, as well as combined circuit. So before we get into it, would you please do me a favor and smash that like button because it really does help to tell YouTube that this is a good video. And let's get right to the first example. So let's look at this. This is part of a circuit. You can see two resistors that are connected in series, which means they are along the same path of current. The current only has one path here. Therefore, they are in series. If you want to watch a video about series and parallel circuits and the difference between them, I've done a video on that. I'll leave the link in the description. So let's look at this. How do we combine this? Now, when we combine resistance in a series circuit, it's very simple. All we have to do is, so let's say this is R1 and R2. Let's label them. Resistor 1 and resistor 2. The effective resistance here, I'm going to use REFF for effective resistance. This will equal to R1 plus R2. And that is all. That is all we have to do for a series circuit. So when we want to do for this circuit, all we have to do is add 2 ohms and 3 ohms. Ohms is the unit for resistance. So altogether here we would get 5 ohms. So the effective resistance across, let's label this as AB. The effective resistance across AB is 5 ohms. So we could see these two resistors as a single resistor with a value of 5 ohms. This is the point of doing effective resistance. We are combining the value of all the resistors put together and we can represent it as a single resistor of 5 ohms. This greatly simplifies all our calculations. Now let's look at a parallel circuit. So when we are dealing with a parallel circuit, something like this. Now you can see it's a parallel circuit because when the current comes in, it is going to split into two parts. So we will have two different currents here. Now, this is where we have a parallel circuit. If the current only has one path, like earlier, it's a series circuit. When the current splits, it's a parallel circuit. It has more than one part, it's a parallel circuit. So in this case, the current splits into two parts. So how do we combine the resistance here? We cannot directly add them as we did before. So for parallel circuits, a bit different. How we find the effective resistance is, I find it easier to use this formula. R effective, effective resistance will be equals to 1 over 1 over the first resistor plus 1 over the second resistor. Now, of course, I want to stress here that this does not only apply to two resistors. If you had more resistors, you could keep adding it. Same with the series circuit as well. You can do R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 and so on for the series circuit. For the parallel circuit, it will be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and so on. So here, let's label this as R1 and R2, first and second resistor. So what would the calculation look like? This would be equals to, now all we have to do is 1 over 1 over 2, that's R1 plus 1 over 3. So when you work this out, this will be equals to 1 over 5 over 6. So when we have 1 over 5 over 6, you have 1 divided by a fraction. So the answer will just be a reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator. What do I mean by this? When we have 1 over 5 over 6, the answer is simply 6 over 5. The reciprocal of 5 over 6. 6 over 5, which is equals to 1.2 ohms. And therefore, we can simplify this diagram to look like this. These two resistors combined will give a total resistance, an effective resistance of 1.2 ohm. So I hope the picture is getting clearer here. What we are doing is we are combining the resistance so that we can represent the value of the total resistance, the combined resistance, as a single value. Now, these are relatively simple examples. So let's go to a little bit more complicated example. Now, this is known as a combined circuit. So you can see, this is a parallel circuit because when the current comes in here, it is going to split into two different parts. Let's call it I2 and I3. However, you will also notice along the I2 path, there are two resistors that are connected in series. So R1 and R2 are actually connected in series. And then let's call this R3. So what do we do in this case? Which formula do we use? We always tackle the resistors that are connected in series first. The 
we simplify that first. So let's look at R2 and R1. Let's combine them first. So the combined resistance here, R combined for R1 and R2 will simply be, since they are connected in series, we just add them together. We just take the sum. So this will be R1 plus R2. And the value of this will be 2 plus 4, which is equals to 6 ohms. Once you've done that, then it will look like this. So this has now become 6 ohms. Just like we did earlier, we are taking the two values of the resistance and we are combining it together to be represented as a single value. So the diagram can be simplified to this. Now, Once we reach this point, so again, now we are dealing with just a parallel circuit. So again, you can see the current splits. The moment the current splits, it is connected in parallel. So let's call this R4. R4. R4 is the combined resistance of R1 and R2. This is still R3. So R3 and R4 are connected in parallel. And when they are connected in parallel, we can use the formula as we used earlier for parallel circuit. And that would be the effective resistance is equals to 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now this would simply give us, this is equals to 1 over 1 over, in this case, it is R4 and R3. So let me just make this specific to this example, R4 and R3. So this will give us 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3. And when you calculate this, you will get 1 over, you will get 3 over 6. So this means, again, all you have to do is take the fraction, the denominator and do the reciprocal. So 3 over 6 will become 6 over 3, which is simply equals to 2 ohms. And there we have it. So now this is simplified to 2 ohms. So let's just review what we've done here. We've taken this, this combined uh, circuit here, where we have resistors connected in series as well as in parallel. And then this whole thing, that means the resistance across, let's make it AB again. Resistance across AB can be represented by a single value, and that would be 2 ohms, A to B. So this is how we do a combined circuit. Now, let's look at a more complicated diagram. Let's get to an even more complicated diagram. Let's look at this. So this is not so clear. Look at how it is arranged. Now, the first step to do here is always to follow the current. If you want to know whether something is connected in series or in parallel to another component in the circuit, all you have to do is follow the current. When we follow the flow of current, we are actually following the flow of positive charge. And this is why current is said to flow from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery, or whatever power source we are using, tri-cell or any other power source. So we are looking at the current coming out from, this is the positive terminal and the negative terminal of the dry cell. So the current comes out from here. Please keep in mind that electrons are not positive charges, but negative charges. Therefore, the direction of flow of electrons is actually in the opposite direction. Not from positive to negative, but from negative to positive. However, when we are talking about electric current, we are looking at the flow of positive charge. Therefore, come out of the positive terminal into the negative terminal. So let's follow the path of the current from the positive terminal. Now, once it comes to this junction here, I'm going to label this as A. Once it comes to A, it's going to split. And therefore, we will have a different value of current. I'm going to call this I2 and I'm going to call this I3. So let's follow I2 and I3. I2 is going to flow through this resistor, let's call it R1 and R2. I2 is going to flow through the two resistors, and then it's going to come down here, and it's going to join back at this point, let's call it B. So let's follow I3. I3 is going to go through, let's call this R3, it's going to come down, and then it's going to go through R4, and then, again, it's going to join at B. So I2 and I3 will join at B to come back as the initial total current that left the dry cell. So this is what is happening. So here, let's simplify this diagram. It is always helpful to actually redraw the diagram so that we can see the picture much clearer. Let's start with the positive terminal. So we have the positive terminal, and then you have a wire. And then we come to the junction A. So actually... We are at A, 
And at A, we know that the current splits two ways, to I2 and I3. So let's do that. Let's follow two parts of current here. So the first part, if we look at I2, it goes through R1 and R2. So let's draw that. We have R1 here. And then it goes through R2. After going through R2, it joins back at B. So let's do this. We join it back at B. So this is R1 and R2 and the values are 2 ohm and 4 ohms. So let's follow I3. Let's follow the path of I3. I3 first goes through R3 here and then it goes through R4 and then it joins back at B. So let's label that. We have R3 and R4. Their values are 3 ohms and 3 ohms. And then it joins back at B. Then it goes to the negative terminal. So let's just look what we've done here. So we've taken the diagram that looks very complicated. You can't really see it very clearly. And then we've converted it to this diagram. This is done by simply following the path of the current. So you follow the path of the current and you split it accordingly. Now once we get to this diagram, it is fairly simple. So again, this is a combined circuit. You have resistors that are connected in series as well as in parallel. So what we do is we combine all the resistors connected in series first. Therefore, let's take the combined resistance for the first one. So the R combined, combined resistance for R1 and R2 will be equals to R1 plus R2. And the value of that is 2 ohms plus 4 ohms, which is equals to 6 ohms. So we have the combined resistance for the first part. Let's go to the second part. So the combined resistance for the bottom two resistors will be simply R3 plus R4. Then the value is 3 plus 3. This is because they are connected in series. And so this is 6 ohms as well. So now we can simplify this circuit. So this circuit is going to become, this will simply become two points here. This will be like this. We've combined the top two and the bottom two. So this is now 6 ohms and 6 ohms. This is what it's become. Alright, so here is A and B. So let's call this R5 and R6. R5 and R6 are actually the combined resistance from earlier. Now these two are connected in parallel. So we simply use the formula. This will be equals to, so the effective resistance now. Now we are getting the effective resistance of the whole circuit. This is equals to 1 over, let's use the example here, 1 over R5 plus 1 over R6. And this will equals to 1 over 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6. Now this will be equals to 1 over 2 over 6. Once again, all we have to do is write it as a reciprocal of the fraction in the denominator. We get 6 over 2 and the value is 3 ohms. And so this whole thing can be represented like this. We have one resistor, a single resistor with a value of 3 ohms. So let's just see what we've done. We've come from this diagram this circuit all the way to just 3 ohms. So this represents the combined resistance of all the resistors in the circuit. From the positive terminal to the negative terminal of the power source, the total resistance of the whole circuit, the combined resistance, the effective resistance is 3 ohms. If you enjoyed doing that as much as me guys, please do hit that like button, smash that like button. It really does help to grow the channel. And if you like videos like this, do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one video a week and I'll see you in the next video.